Unicorn Overlord is the best game that I've played this year. It's like a more fleshed out version of what the original Ogre Battle was. It takes everything that that game did well and improves upon it. Well, almost everything. There's really only one thing that annoys me about this game. I have very little to complain about when it comes to Unicorn Overlord. Um, I love almost everything about it. The story's very good. The graphics are great. The gameplay is fantastic. The thing I don't like about it is the time limit during the battles. I don't know why it's there. It really doesn't need to be. I don't think it adds anything to the game, and it's just more of an annoyance, especially when you don't realize what's happening. Despite the fact that they do have a few audio cues to let you know, hey, you're running out of time, it shouldn't have to (laughs) remind me that I'm running out of time, because the time limit shouldn't exist unless you have a specific mission for it. Yeah, that's the only thing I don't like about the game. Unicorn Overlord is a strategy RPG, which is one of my favorite genres of games to play. I'm not always good at all of them, but I really enjoy playing them. I tend to like the more tactics-focused one, ones like uh, Tactics Ogre, Fire Emblem, Final Fantasy Tactics, and a whole bunch of others that I can't really name right now. However... Ogre Battle and now Unicorn Overlord, those are my favorite type of RPGs because they focus more on telling the story, they let you kind of plan out your tactics a little bit better, and they're just a ton of fun to play. To give you a very brief overview of what the story is, there is a big bad guy who takes over the central country on this continent. He kills the queen, or at least it's believed that he kills the queen, and then he slowly takes over the entire continent. You play as the exiled prince of the first kingdom that he takes over, and your goal is to free the land from his evil influence. Much like Ogre Battle, which is a phrase you're probably going to hear quite a bit during this video, there's more to it than that. And in this game, you have a whole bunch of characters. Uh, Too many at times, but they do make the story better, as there are a lot of side quests that you can go on to get them. And there's a lot of more personal stories that you can unlock, just as people get more rapport with each other. But as you go through the game, you find more people, you recruit more soldiers to your ranks... And eventually you fight the big bad guy at the end. You also learn a lot about the lore of this world that the game exists in. Once you defeat the big bad guy at the end, you find out that he was not actually the big bad guy. There's an evil wizard who is controlling everything. Technically he's a necromancer, but whatever. And that evil necromancer becomes your new enemy that you have to fight. Once he's defeated, that's when things kind of end. I'm pretty sure there are multiple endings in this, just because I've seen other people's videos to try to find out how many endings there are, because this took me a long time to beat. And I didn't have time to go through all of them, which is something I might do later on. I'll get more into the ending later in this video, but it's fairly good. It wraps up the story nicely, it gives you an epilogue for all of the different characters that you've recruited over the, over time, and yeah, it's a pretty nice ending, where at least on my playthrough, everything's happy. So let's talk a little bit more about the gameplay. The gameplay is very similar to Ogre Battle and Ogre Battle 64. You create a series of units from all of the different characters that you have. You can have a maximum of 10 units, and each unit can have a maximum of 5 characters. Over the course of the game, you gain more honor, and that will allow you to unlock more units that you can have, and will allow you to put more characters in each unit. Each unit starts out with just two characters, and then you can slowly build them up as you get more honor. You get honor by completing different quests, by winning battles, and that sort of thing. You're always getting honor in the game, so it's never really a problem. 
There are two ways to get more characters. You can hire mercenaries from the different forts that you're going to find throughout the game, or you can complete side quests to get characters on your side. There are some options to either recruit someone to your side after a battle, or you can execute them, or you can send them away. For the most part, I tried to keep everyone alive. I think there was one time that I executed somebody, and that was the end of him. So I don't know what his storyline was going to be. As your characters fight alongside of each other, or if they eat together at one of the different inns that you can find, or taverns that you find, then they gain more rapport with each other. As they gain more rapport, their friendship level increases, and smaller stories will get unlocked as you go through. You'll see those on the, mi on the world map as just little hearts that you can walk up to, and then you can you know, see a little cutscene of the two characters interacting. Each character has a character class in this game. Most of them can be promoted if you gain enough honor. There's no limit on when you can upgrade them or promote them, so if you hire a mercenary, he stays at level 3, you can still promote him if you have enough honor. Honor is really important in the game because it just lets you do everything with your different units. There is a large number of character classes that can't be promoted, or at least I wasn't able to promote them or figure out how you're supposed to do that. Those characters are specific to like the elf region, so none of the elf character classes have a promotion, none of the bestral classes, so like the were lion, were owl, were bear, and were fox, those don't seem to have promotions to them, and neither do the angel classes. There are a few others that are specific to certain characters that I wasn't able to find a promotion for. So, yeah, that's kind of crappy at first, but I'm guessing if they decide to do DLC, that's something they might add in. On the battle screen, you're basically moving your characters around. I'm sorry, you're moving your units around like a game of chess. And each of those units has a specific number of stamina points to them. These control how many battles they can get in. So if you have nine stamina points, that means they can get into nine fights before they need to rest. You also get some items that can give you more stamina. And the stamina points are specific to each unit. So yeah, don't really worry about it. If you run out of stamina, you can just have your character rest, but make sure they're well protected, because if they're resting, they can't fight in the battle. If they run out of stamina points, they can still fight in battles, as long as you didn't tell it to rest. When a unit loses a battle, they get knocked back a little bit, and they have to rest for a certain amount of time. You can see this as like a little time meter that's counting down. It almost looks like a clock. The same thing happens when you rest a character. They have a little clock that moves around as well. You can speed these up with items like hourglasses. You get a bunch of different ones, and they just take a certain amount of time off. So, like, silver is decent, gold is, the, is very good, and then I think there are a few after that, but I stopped paying attention to those items. Equipment plays a pretty big role in this. You can equip different weapons, armor, and items to your characters. And that's pretty awesome. And it comes into... Oh gosh, how do I want to put this? It's very important at the very last battle in the game. I'll just skip ahead a little bit. If you didn't equip your main character with the unicorn ring, you can't beat the final boss. So... If you were stupid like me and just automatically assumed that it was equipped to your main character, uh, you're going to have a pretty frustrating time trying to figure out why he isn't using the super attack to kill the bad guy at the very end. And it's going to get annoying until you actually find out why, which is because you did not have the unicorn ring equipped to him. 
The mission objectives are fairly straightforward. On the battle screen, you'll have to capture a certain number of towns, which they'll show and tell you at the very beginning, or you'll have to kill the enemy leader or kill all of the enemies. I wish things were done a little bit differently. Like, they could have done something with the time limit where you just need to survive until the time limit expires, but I never encountered that during the game. Or if it was the mission objective, it was survive a certain amount of time or capture these locations. Yeah, I I don't really know why the time limit's there. It's pretty pointless, in my opinion. After the battle, you can visit the towns that you've liberated, and you can buy resources there, or you can visit the tavern if the town is big enough, and you can also deliver resources to that town in order to repair it. This will give you more honor, and it'll also give you a little bonus, like certain items, some more money, that sort of thing. I went out of my way to go around to every town in the game and repair it just to see what happens, and it really isn't all that great. You just get a little cutscene telling you how great you are. The resources to repair all the towns are everywhere throughout the game, so they're pretty easy to find, and they are specific to each region of the game. This game is gorgeous. I really love just the overall look of it. I love the sprites on the world map and also on the battle screens. I love the way the characters look when you go to the battle screens. I like the fact that they make some of the larger characters a little transparent so you can see what's happening because, you know, some of these characters are pretty goddamn big and they might, you know, clutter up the screen, especially with five characters in each unit. I love the way the world map looks. It reminds me of some of those games that were initially started on the Super Nintendo and then later ported to the PS1. So something like uh, Tales of Destiny or even Ogre Battle and Tactics Ogre, those were brought over. And yeah, it looks really great. It's far more detailed and more cleaned up than what those games were because, well, this is a modern game. But that was kind of the feeling I got when I was playing this, that it looked like something from really like the late 90s, but it was just cleaned up and brought over to a modern console today. The character sprites all look great, especially on the battle screen where you can see them in their full detail, and they've got their little animations and everything. Their attacks look really great. The magical attacks look wonderful. It's just an awesome game. When you go into some of the cutscenes and they use the battle screen ta- uh, graphics, they look really good. And then I like the little cutscenes when you're wandering around on the world map as well. Everything in this game is just kind of set up for you to succeed, and the graphics help you out a lot with that, especially on the world map when you're trying to find like key items or you're trying to find the resources that you need in order to upgrade the towns or repair the bridges, or just anything that you might be looking for. It's very easy to get around on the world map. There is a quick travel thing that you can do, so that's great. You don't have to wander around trying to find the right path and flipping back and forth to the map. Everything just looks really awesome. I love the fact that you can explore the map when you're out of battles. It's just really cool. I honestly love everything about this game with the exception of the time limit, but I'm going to stop talking about that now. So I'm pretty sure I got just, like, the normal ending, or a normal ending. You defeat the big bad guy. It turns out that the big bad guy was actually killed by your mom, but that really wasn't him because he was just wearing a set of armor that had been inhabited by an evil spirit from the previous empire that had ruled the entire continent. That spirit possesses your mother, and she sort of becomes a vessel for the big bad guy. Once you defeat the big bad guy in this, I believe it's Emperor Galerius, he ends up being just a pawn for Baltro, who is the 
evil necromancer in this whole thing, and the actual big bad guy that you need to defeat. Assuming that you knew to equip the unicorn ring and didn't just, you know, assume that it was automatically equipped to your main character for some reason, I fully accept the fact that I was just stupid and never bothered to check. But once you do that and you defeat Baltro, then you get the ending where all of the sages that have sort of imbued your unicorn ring with power, they come out and they help you defeat Baltro and his essence is destroyed and the portal to the beyond that he was trying to create gets closed. And if any of this doesn't make any sense, I can completely understand why you would be confused at this point. I'm pretty sure that you'll get different endings based on all the different actions that you can take, whether you start executing everybody that was standing against you instead of recruiting them into your you know, army, whether or not you decide to kill Emperor Galerius at the end, or you know just let him get taken over by Baltro. That's something that I might want to check into on the next playthrough I do of this, just to see how you trying to kill him at the end differs from, you know, just letting the ring kind of do its magic and revive him. At least that's what I think I was doing. You can also get different endings depending on who you give the maiden ring to. I gave it to Scarlet because, you know, whenever I see a pretty blonde woman, I make bad decisions. And I gave her the maiden ring. I thought about giving it to one of the other people, but, yeah, whatever. You need to have a full rapport with that character in order to give them the ring. So it was either Scarlet, this attractive elf lady, or the super buff gladiator lady. I probably should have given it to the gladiator lady, but, you know, whatever. Once you and the sages defeat Baltro, and assuming that you knew that you needed to equip the unicorn ring to your character and you didn't just take it for granted that it was already equipped i'm kind of stupid i'm going to go ahead and admit that once you defeat baltro then you get the real ending and you get a lot of closure for all the characters that you've recruited i'm assuming that if you get more of them then you'll have a much longer epilogue and you'll find out more of just what these different characters did after the battle you also unlock like New Game Plus, and that is something I might want to try later on. But overall, I kind of like the ending, and it'd be pretty cool to go back and see just how many endings there are. Or to look up and see how many people have gotten all the endings. I had a lot of fun with Unicorn Overlord. The gameplay might not be for everyone, since a lot of the battles are just auto-battlers, and you don't really have too much control once the fighting starts. Everything's pretty much decided before it cuts to like that scene of the characters fighting, but you can do a few things to sort of influence that. You can make sure your characters are all healed up, you can also have arrow attacks and magical assist attacks. So that's kind of fun. But if you didn't like the gameplay from Ogre Battle and Ogre Battle 64, you're probably not going to like the gameplay for this very much. It is a lot of fun, and there is a ton of stuff to do in the game, but it just might not be for everyone, and that's okay. This is a gameplay style that I just didn't think that I was ever going to see again. I thought that Ogre Battle and Ogre Battle 64 were pretty much it for this type of strategy RPG. But thankfully, it's still out there, and you know I really love the fact that it was brought back with Unicorn Overlord. It's a really great spiritual successor to the Ogre Battle series, especially since this story is much more developed than the first Ogre Battle was. And they do follow similar patterns where you have to liberate a continent from an evil empire and you're going around saving people and recruiting new characters. And there's a lot of story in this. So, yeah, it's just a wonderful game. 
Anyway, that's going to wrap things up. Let me know what you think in the comments below, and I will talk to you all later. Bye.